A very good morning to all of you. I cordially welcome you all for this engineering thermodynamics course. So today's uh, classroom discussion topics are available energy referred to a cycle. So that is we have to find out available energy whenever a cyclic process is taking place. And we have to find out also the useful work. And similarly, how can we define the dead state conditions? So what is the motivation to study these particular the topics? It is very essential to apply available energy concept to a cyclic process and find out the useful work under dead state conditions. So the outcome of the today's lecture is you should be able to apply available energy concept to a cyclic process and define dead state condition. So in the previous class, we defined availability and unavailability. So availability is nothing but is the maximum amount of the work that can be produced from a heat engine. Whenever it is reaching to the dead state condition and unavailable energy is nothing but how much amount of the heat is rejected by the heat engine that is known as the unavailable energy. So summation of available energy and unavailable energy is known as is the total energy which is supplied to the system. So the total energy is equivalent to available energy plus unavailable energy. So these are the definitions of uh, available and unavailable energy. And also how can we define a dead state? So that is uh, whenever we are having a system it is in the thermodynamic equilibrium condition with the environment then it is denoted by a subscript to zero that is P naught, V naught, T naught, like just you see here T naught. So T naught is nothing but is a temperature. That is the temperature of your system whenever it is uh, in thermodynamic equilibrium with the environment. So at this particular point, no more work can be done. That is whenever it reaches to the dead state condition, the work producing opportunity is seized and whenever it is slowly towards approaching the dead state condition, then automatically the work producing opportunity will be diminishes and at the dead state condition, the work producing opportunity will be seized. So that is the importance of the dead state condition. Now, how can we find out available energy refer to a cyclic process? So available energy, it is nothing but the available part of the energy supplied is the maximum work output obtainable from a certain heat input in a cyclic heat engine. So in the previous diagram, I've already told you that. So whenever we are having the Q1 amount of the heat input, so with this Q1 amount of the heat input, so how much amount of the maximum work we can extract from a heat engine. So that is nothing but available energy or the availability or it's the exergy. And I told you that the total energy, it is always equal into available energy plus unavailable energy. So here the total energy which is supplied to the heat engine is nothing but how much? So it is the Q1. So Q1 amount of the energy is supplied to the heat engine. So out of Q1, so how much portion of Q1 is converted into the work and how much portion of heat is rejected to the surrounding atmosphere? So that we have to consider. So that is the Q1 is our input to the heat engine. So by taking this Q1 input only the heat engine is producing W amount of the work and the Q2 amount of the heat is rejected to the surrounding atmosphere or to the sink. So the same thing here uh, we have to study. So Q1 is equal into AE plus UE that is available energy plus unavailable energy. So our intention is to calculate the available energy. So available energy can be written as Q1 minus unavailable energy. So just you go through this particular the schematic diagram. So we can write down the efficiency of a reversible Carnot heat engine as 1 minus T2 by T1, 1 minus T2 by T1. And here we are approaching that the sink temperature T2 is approaching the surrounding temperature that is nothing but the T0. So just now I told you that is a T0 that is nothing but the system is in the thermal equilibrium or the thermodynamic equilibrium with the surrounding environment temperature, then we can say the temperature is equal to T0. So that's why T2 is replaced by T0. So now 
n maximum is equivalent to 1 minus t naught by t1 so we know that uh, efficiency is nothing but work done by the heat supplied so our intention is to calculate w max so w max is equivalent to efficiency into heat supplied so just you differentiate the above equation so we are able to have delta w maximum is equivalent to t1 minus t2 by t1 so minus t naught by t1 into delta q1 so that is equivalent to the available energy so here we can write down the maximum work or the available energy so that is equivalent to is a q minus t naught into delta s and this particular t naught into delta s is known as unavailable energy so this is the t naught into delta s is known as unavailable energy so because we know that the total energy is equal to available energy plus unavailable energy so that's why this is unavailable energy so whenever we are sending this particular one to the left hand side so the total heat supplied is equal to available energy plus unavailable energy so with this we can conclude that unavailable energy is always equal to t naught into delta s t naught into delta s that is s1 minus sn so this is the unavailable energy because i already told you that so that is it is the t naught so below which you are able to represent because it is the amount of the energy which is lost to the surrounding atmosphere so that is it cannot be retrieved back so that's why it is known as that is the unavailable energy so it is the product of the lowest temperature of the heat rejection and the change of entropy of the system during the process of supplying heat that is i told you that unavailable energy is nothing but t naught into ds so the same thing here i am explaining t naught that is the lowest temperature of the heat rejection it is the lowest temperature of the heat rejection is the t naught below which you cannot reject the heat that is maximum we can reject the heat up to the surrounding atmosphere temperature only so below which we cannot uh, reject the heat so that is the maximum heat rejection is possible only up to the surrounding atmosphere temperature so t naught into ds the same thing is explained here so next how can we find out the useful work so that is very very important one so that is the surrounding work is basically calculated according to this particular equation that is the p naught into dv so that is p naught into v2 by v1 so a useful work so a useful work is nothing but so w minus w surrounding that is actually we are able to get the work but we have to subtract the surrounding work also because the surrounding work is basically given by p naught into dv so whenever from the actual work whenever you are subtracting the surrounding work you are able to get the useful work so that is here the w denotes w actual so w actual minus w surroundings is equal into the useful work so it is uh, one of the gate problem based upon the availability concept which is referred to a cyclic process so so far we discussed about the concepts now let us have some applications of this availability applied to a steady flow process so it is a 5 kg of air at 550 kelvin and 4 bar is enclosed in a closed system so that is mass of the air is given that is the 5 kg is the mass and the initial temperature is given as the 550 kelvin and the initial pressure is given as the 4 bar now he is asking us determine the availability of the system if the surrounding pressure and temperature are 1 bar and 290 kelvin respectively that is the surrounding that is the surrounding pressure that is the p naught so p naught is equal to 1 bar and t naught is equal to 290 kelvin and in the second case is asking if the air is cooled at constant pressure to the atmospheric temperature determine the availability and effectiveness so how to solve this particular problem just based on whatever the uh, formulas we studied so here first of all you write down the given data so because it is in the bar always you have to convert into the si units that is a newton per meter square so the availability of the system availability of the system just now we derived this particular the equation so in this particular one the u stands for internal energy that is the cv into delta t so that is instead of u1 you write down the cv t1 and u0 cv t0 and we know all the values that is how can we find out the entropy change during the polytropic process because whenever we are discussing about uh, entropy change of the various processes we derived this particular the equation so this entropy change equation is in terms of the cp and r 
So here we know all the values. So just you substitute and we are able to have the DS value because first of all DS value should be known because in this particular one the only unknown is the DS. Now after finding out the DS value now you substitute in this particular the equation. So we are able to have the availability of the system is equivalent to 576.7 kilojoules. And also he is asking the second bit that is the available energy as well as the effectiveness. So heat transferred during the cooling process that is we know that is the MCP delta T that is a sensible heat transfer always. So first you find out the sensible heat transfer Q and next you know that uh, the change of entropy during the cooling process because according to the constant pressure process MCP log T2 by T1 but here it is a T1 by T0. So here the entropy change during the constant pressure process is equivalent to 3.216 and we studied that unavailable energy is always equivalent to T0 into ds. So you find out unavailable energy. Then how can you find out the available energy? Because the total energy is equal into the summation of available energy plus unavailable energy. So automatically available energy is equal into the total energy minus unavailable energy. So total energy is equivalent to how much? 1306.5 minus unavailable energy is 932.64. So available energy is nothing but 373.86 kilojoules of the available energy is available. So effectiveness, it is nothing but is the ratio of available energy to the availability of the system. So that is here available energy we find it out as 373.86. And now in the previous case, now it is 576.7 availability of the system. So now whenever you are, uh, uh, that is uh, ratio, this ratio will give you the effectiveness that is equal to 64.8 percentage. So uh, like this, uh, we are able to uh, discuss about uh, available energy referred to a cyclic process and how can we find out the useful work and what do you mean by the dead state condition. I hope you understood the concepts very clearly. So we will meet you in the next classroom discussion topic. Thank you one and all for listening this lecture. Thank you.